So at this point, you might have a handful of scripts and might be wondering where exactly should you put all of these scripts? Should you put them on a flash drive and keep them there for later use? Well, maybe backing up your scripts to a flash drive probably isn't the worst thing that you can do. But what I want to show you guys is where to store scripts on your Linux file system. So that way you can actually run them from one location. Now there's all kinds of different directories on the Linux file system, but we're going to focus specifically on where to store scripts in this video. And in fact, let's just go ahead and get started and I'll tell you all about it. For this lesson, let's dust off the universal update script that we wrote back in lesson eight, since that could be an example of a useful script that we might want to run from time to time. Go ahead and grab that script from lesson eight and we'll get started. And in my case, I actually have it right here in my local working directory. I renamed it to update.sh and here we have the script. Now, for the most part, we've been running scripts from our current working directory. So if I minimize this, I have a number of scripts here. We can see them in green. And right here, I have the update script that I was talking about. And what I could do is just type dot forward slash in the name of the script. And that works just fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But we're running this script from my current working directory, which is actually my home directory. That's not really the best place to run scripts from. Now, for an example of why you might not want to run your scripts from your home directory, consider this. Say you've written a script that automates an important business function, and the script is currently located in your home directory. Let's also assume that you run that script every week to carry out a very important task. And maybe this is working just fine, but now you've gone on vacation this week, and you won't be running the script while you're away, so maybe a coworker has agreed to help you out. If the script is in your home directory, then your coworker may not have access to the script at all and won't be able to run it. For that reason, as well as other reasons, it's better to have a central location from which to run your scripts. This file system directory should be located where the people that need to run it will have access to it, but also not in a location that's wide open to where everyone has access to it. So where might you store your script so that other administrators can also access it? Well, to better answer that, I want to point you to the existence of a very special standard, the File System Hierarchy Standard, or the FHS for short. So what I'll do is open up a web browser, and I will show you this file. And I've actually copied the URL off camera. So I'll paste it in right here. And here we have the document. Now, this file is huge. So I'm not going to go over the entire thing, nor am I going to ask you to read all of it either. Rather, you should at least be aware that the FHS file exists and what its purpose is. This is definitely something that you should consider bookmarking. In short summary, the FHS specification exists in order to clarify what the purpose is for each of the typical directories that are found on most or all distributions of Linux. I have videos on the YouTube channel that goes over some of these in greater detail, but for our purposes, we're mainly concerned with where to run scripts from. If you want to learn more about the Linux file system, then consider checking out the document that I mentioned. But for us, we're just going to focus on what we need it for today. Anyway, the FHS document points out the user local directory for use with locally installed programs that system administrators use. And you know what? That sounds perfect for our use case. Specifically, the bin directory, which is also located in user local, is where we'll place our scripts. And as an added bonus, depending on the configuration of your distribution, when you execute commands, it's probably going to look in that directory anyway. So what I'm going to do is move the update script into that directory, user local bin. I'll need sudo because, well, I'll need administrative access in order to copy that file or move it to a directory that I don't own and I'll use the mv command for move. The file that I want to move is of course the update.sh script, and I want to move it into slash usr, user is abbreviated, slash local, slash bin, and I could just copy it just like this, and the name will be the same inside the target directory, but I'm going to simplify the name down to simply update. 
So if I list the storage of user local bin, we can see right here we have the update script. Now, the thing is though, we can also see that my user owns a script. It's usually a better idea to change the permissions. So that way we can control who can modify this. For right now, I'm going to make this script owned by root. That'll make sure that somebody needs sudo privileges or root permissions in order to modify that script. I would rather not have a user able to modify that script. So I'll run sudo and then chown root for the user, root for the group. And I have entire videos on this on the YouTube channel if you're curious what I'm doing here. This pertains to Linux permissions. My Linux essential series on YouTube actually goes over this in greater detail. And what I want to modify is of course, user local bin update. So let's go ahead and double check that. And here we can see the update script, which is now owned by root for the user and root for the group. And I'm a little bit more comfortable with that. Like I mentioned, I would rather this script not be accessible or at least writable by any user that doesn't have access to do so. If something is going to be able to make administrative changes to the server, you will want to restrict the permissions. Again, check out my Linux Essentials series for more on that. I won't mention that again. I just wanted to point that out. But anyway, let's go ahead and continue. Now, another thing that I did was I dropped the .sh extension. Why did I do that? Well, an extension of .sh is not required for any script in Linux. In fact, file extensions are not required in Linux at all. Now, in other operating systems, such as Windows, the file extension really does matter. But Linux handles this a little bit differently. And on Linux systems, file extensions are more for the user, not for the system, if we want to give the user a hint as far as what the file actually is. For example, if it's a Python script, the file name will end in .py or nothing. It's actually totally fine to have no file extension at all. That's acceptable because if you recall, the first line inside our script is a shebang that points out what type of file it actually is or what interpreter needs to be used, in our case bin bash. So we don't need the extension. We could simply type update, literally. We could simply type the word update just like that. I didn't have to type user local bin update. I could just simply type update. And as you can see, it works. So what this means is that this particular script, this universal update script, I can drop this script into the user local bin directory of any Linux installation that I actually maintain. Maybe I could have some sort of automation system that automatically copies this file to all of my servers. And then after the file is copied to a server, I could simply type update just like that without needing to type the full path to the script and it'll work. So now that we have this script available from a central location, the script has become that much more useful or at least convenient because it's easier to access. So why exactly am I able to use update without typing the full path? Well, one thing that we can do real quick is run which and then update. And like we've discussed earlier in the series, which will go ahead and let us know where a particular binary script or executable file happens to be. And as you can see, the shell knows that update is available at user local bin update. And that's why we don't have to type the full path. But how exactly did the shell know that this file was copied there? Was it because we've just copied the file into that directory and it has some awesome memory that understands that we copied that file over there? So the fact that we copied it is telling it that from that point forward, it's going to be found there? Well, actually, no, that's not how this works. Instead, we have a very special variable called path in all uppercase, and that variable contains all of the directories inside of it that the shell is going to look inside of to find a script or binary that it can run. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at that variable right now. We'll type echo and then path in all caps with a dollar sign just like that. And just like we've discussed earlier in the series, when we have a variable that's in all caps, like this one is, that represents a system variable or an environment variable. And in my case, that's what that variable actually contains. It contains a list of paths separated by a colon, like you see here, and user local bin is actually one of the paths that it's looking in. And as a reminder, if I type env, we get a listing of environment variables that we have in our session. There's all kinds of variables here. And in fact, 
we see it right here. So like I mentioned before, the env command will print out all the environment variables and path is right there. It was already created for us. It contains those directories like you see. And because I put the update script in one of those directories, specifically user local bin, that means that the shell is automatically going to look for a command named update anytime I type update. It's not going to find it in user local s bin. I didn't copy it in there, so that's going to fail. But then it's going to look into user local bin, which is where I copied that file into. So at that point, it's going to find it in that directory, and then it's going to be able to run it. And also, when I type which and then the name of the script, in this case update, the which command is going to show that it's in user local bin and show us that that's where it's found. Now, if for some reason user local bin is not in your path, and I can't think of any scenario where this might be the case, but if it's not there or you need to add a different directory to your path variable, it's very easy to do that. What we're going to do is type export. We're going to create a new variable named path and we're going to set that equal to user local bin colon and then the path variable. So what that actually means is that the new version of path is going to include user local bin colon and then all of the other directories that were already in the path variable because I'm calling the path variable right here. So that's actually going to add user local bin to path. Now I'm not going to press enter here because it's already located in path, but if you needed to add user local bin or another directory, if you'd like, then this is how you would actually do that. But in most cases, you shouldn't have to do that. User local bin is part of the file system hierarchy standard. That standard is followed by pretty much every Linux distribution out there. So unless you customize something and maybe deleted that, user local bin should already be in your path. So there you go. This lesson was fairly simple. I mean, we were starting to get into more complex examples. So I guess it's probably a good thing to take a little break, wind it down a bit, and go over a very important concept and understanding where to save your scripts. That is a very important concept because you definitely want to make sure that you have scripts available for the people that need to run them. And in this video, I gave you an example of user local bin as being a very appropriate place for scripts. So if you don't have a preference, you can move your scripts, your final scripts, the ones that you are ready to actually start using right there inside that directory, and you should be good to go. I can't believe that we've just finished with class number 10 in this series. Time is just flying by. In this video in particular, I taught you guys where to store your scripts as well as some other concepts as well. So I hope you guys are learning a lot from this series. Anyway, as soon as you're ready to move on, the next video will be there waiting for you guys in the same playlist. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it.